I'm Isaiah, and I am joined by the absolutely amazing oh, Kilgoon, executive producer of Titan Forge. What's going, going on, man? Uh, I mean, a lot. Uh, yeah. You know, it uh, uh, it's been a, a busy week. Um, it's been a it's been it's been a week. Um, but yeah, I think we're we're excited about the reaction to the update show yesterday. Yeah. We're excited about. Um, kind of already starting to roll out some of these plans that we started to talk about yesterday. And yeah, it's, uh, I think, off to a decent start. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, for those of you that are joining us or missed the update show, basically the idea is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every week at 1 p.m. We're just going to be hanging out with you all. We've got chat here on our iPads. Yes. This show is going to be largely unscripted for the most part. The goal is to just talk about what we've got working in the pipeline yeah. and then take some questions for chat from chat and do some Q&A and just chat with you all about Smite too. Yeah, and uh, in future uh, episodes is probably not the right word, yeah. but in future shows, Editions, uh, yeah, streams, streams um, we're going to have uh, more like guests on the show showing and telling and whatnot. Um, but we thought for this first one, we would just kind of talk about uh, kind of what we talked about yesterday, yeah. a little bit of a recap, um, talk about what we've done so far, talk about some things that we have planned in the super short term, um, and then uh, a little bit of spoils uh, with some, a little bit of spoils. some community uh, influence. Yeah, so, we're definitely excited. Yeah, pretty that. excited. Sweet. Well, I guess we can kick it off for yeah. just a quick recap on the update show yesterday. We had CA3 go live yesterday, which yes. is kind of a part of our new kind of big initiative for a lot of different things that we're doing on yeah. the Smite 2 side of things. You want to just talk about a quick recap of for what sure. we got going on? Yeah. So so I think um, the, the the big message from yesterday's show was uh, there, are, there are kind of four key areas where we think we've been failing to meet the community's expectations, yeah. right? Um, there's not enough content in Smite 2, particularly gods. There's not enough quality. Um, we've been moving too slow to update things and, and make things better. Uh, and we haven't been talking to y'all enough. Yeah. Um, the last one, I'll start with first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we haven't been talking with y'all enough and that's why we're here. And yep. as Isaiah said, you know, we're gonna be here three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, any questions you have, uh, there is very little that is going to be off limits in this show. Yeah. So um, if you have a question, ask. ask. If you want to bitch about something that doesn't feel good in the game, we're here to Do listen. That, yeah. Right? Like we want to hear. That's why we're here. Um, so yeah, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, I, I'm uh, you know, a little bit of grace here as we start this this series. Yeah. Uh, I'm not like Mr. Stream guy, you know, I'm not like the smoothest dude on uh, on camera. Uh, Isaiah is much better at this than nah, I am, nah, nah. but uh, I just, you know, I just wanted to be up here and, and talk to everybody because I, uh, you know, I, I like hearing from you directly and understanding what's going on in the world um, and how it inf impacts you as a player. So, um, yeah, if I say something dumb, please uh, forgive me for being, uh, you know, a millennial boomer. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> please, uh, yeah, just uh, be, be a part of the show. I'm excited about it. Awesome. Um, cool. So that was one thing. I had three more things. Uh, we're not moving fast enough. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, yesterday, we shipped the Closed Alpha 3 yep. update uh, early because it was done enough and we wanted to get it out so that you all could start playing it and we could start getting your feedback on what felt good, what didn't feel good. Um, whereas normally, we would have waited until Tuesday to ship that yeah. patch, right? So already, just a sign that we're willing to move faster. Um, we're not committed to this fixed schedule like we used to be. Um, and we're also moving faster on um, doing hot fixes and mm -hmm. updates, uh, both in terms of bugs and balance. And we'll be talking more about what we've done so far and what we have planned next yep. um, in just a minute. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Um, in terms of content, uh, the biggest thing uh, that we announced yesterday is that uh, we're looking to essentially double the current God roster um, by the end of January. Mm -hmm. So currently there, well, I guess as of today, there's 27 gods. Yep. Uh, there were 25 at the start of yesterday, now there's 27. Um, and we're hoping to get to right around 50 uh, in January. Um, the thing I did say yesterday is that like, Plans can always change, yeah. you know, but if by aiming for 50, we get to 48 or we get to 45, that's still a lot better than we would have been. But we are we are very much aiming for 50. We, we have a plan to get to 50. We believe we'll get to 50. But if something happens and we're one or two short, we're still way better off than we would have been had we not made these shifts to allow this to happen. Yeah. I mean, the last thing is just focusing on quality. Uh, and part of it is having these more regular updates like I talked about. And the other part is just the way that we've structured the team. We have. Um, several people that are now devoted specifically to improving um, the balance and, excuse me, to improving uh, core bugs and gameplay feels issues with the game versus adding new features. Yeah. 
Um, and we have, we have one engineer that's just working solely on matchmaking. Um, so hopefully we'll have some exciting updates there. I've just had an interesting conversation about various complexities of matchmaking and yeah. strides and all sorts of weird terminology that uh, I They're way understand. smarter than both of us. Yes, uh, so yes. I just smile that's, and nod whenever I talk about it. We really <laughs> need to get Max on to talk about matchmaking because yeah. we're going to fail. Um, you know, and we have like three or four programmers, depending on the week, just focused on um, bugs and uh, quality of life and um, like core fields and whatnot. Yeah. So uh, lots of exciting stuff there. Um, that's kind of the, the real quick recap of yesterday's um, stream. Um, and then uh, we, we shipped the patch live yep. and we said, Cool, have at it. Yeah. Let's let's see what we need to do. People from here. definitely went at it for yeah. sure. Uh, found some bugs, and I see a note from Pickless Rage in chat. They say I got a 400 uh, megabyte update for Smite One. What's going on? So we want to go ahead and talk about some of the stuff we yeah. patched. Yeah, last so, night. Actually, I think we've patched twice already. We have since yeah. uh, we released closed alpha three yesterday. Uh, I've got some of the hotfix notes, the patch notes for today's patch, up on the screen here for y'all to check out. But this one's just around a bug fixes. Team is definitely already starting to look at some of the balance stuff yeah. for uh, closed alpha three. We'll get into that later. But in terms of buff fixes, stuff that was already fixed from closed alpha three, we had to disable prophetic cloak. It is now re-enabled. We fixed an issue where it could cause players to get into a state where they couldn't take where they did not take damage. Uh, we fixed the fire giant buff. Uh, it was still giving protections at certain kill thresholds. So if you killed the fire giant like two or three times, it started giving protections after that. Uh, there's a small note here. We're currently investigating reports of the fire giant buff not visually applying to players. It's just a visual bug. You're still getting your, your increased strength and intelligence from the fire giant. If you kill it, it's just not showing up properly on the client. Mm -hmm. So we're going to fix that. Uh, we had to disable Thanos Toast yesterday due to an issue. Uh, we fixed something where he could no longer move or a basic attack if he died while he was in his ultimate. And then we fixed like five or six different instances of crash cases yes. and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, those actually rolled out as two separate pieces. Yeah. Right. Um, so there's kind of two ways that we can do uh, hot fixes. Um, we can do uh, a server side patch. Uh, where we can, there's a lot of things that we can fix about what's working on the game just by updating the server and you don't have to download anything. Um, and that's because in a multiplayer game, right, your client is reliant on the server telling it what to do a lot of the time because mm -hmm. otherwise it enables a lot more hacking and you know people messing with the game. Yeah. So a lot of the time we can just fix things by fixing them on the server and you never have to download anything. Your next game, it'll just be better. Um, and that'll be most of the fixes that we roll out probably going forward, uh, just because it's a lot less disruptive to people having to stop playing to download a big update, exactly. right? Yeah. Um, but there were a number of specifically for the client cl client crashes, um, we needed to, to do a new client version, a new download. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what rolled out, I believe this morning, yep. that was the, the 400 megabyte download. Yeah, I believe it rolled out on PC first and then rolled out to consoles a little bit later. Yep. And um, I believe we fixed five different crashes yep. uh, in that build. So. Cool, progress, right? Uh, and that's the whole point of this, right? It's like not like, cool, we're done, guys. The game is better. Yep. It's like, or the game is fixed. No, it's like game is better. It's gonna keep getting better. You know, we're still in an alpha and uh, you know, we gotta get we gotta get better. That's what we know. Yeah. So So that was everything that went out today. Alex, I believe you have some notes yes, on I do. what I do. we're working on right now to get in hopefully soon, maybe yes. later today and, or and early I, Monday. I uh, I do have I I know there are some questions in chat. We're gonna cycle back to those. I don't wanna I don't want chat to feel like we're ignoring them. I feel like we just you know, we'll just talk about this bit yeah. and then we'll get back to it, guys. Um, okay, cool. So uh, in terms of bug fix stuff, um, we currently have a server build running right now um, for an issue with Mordred's AO3 where it has a component where it deals extra damage based on how much you move. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be inconsistent if you leap right when the AO3 hits. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it's kind of an edge case thing, but it, it is a, an inconsistency and it feels bad and we're gonna fix it. Um, other things that we're looking into and we will get them out as soon as we can, might be today, might be Monday, um, is the fire giant buff sometimes not applying that you mentioned. Um, there's a specific Yemoja bug that I don't wanna talk too much about because it's edge case exploitable, but we, if you're aware of that bug, we are fixing it. Um, Zeus's charges sometimes don't apply. Mm, yeah, um, I saw something on Reddit. Yeah, about that. yeah. and it, it's sometimes it's related. Maybe it doesn't bounce enough times or, you know, that that general issue. We're looking into that and should have a fix for that relatively soon. Um, a script is running right now, uh, which I think will just fix it maybe while this show is on. But we'll see if that is, is 
is or is not um, to fix uh, people that should own the Hades and Odin um, skins from the Smite One Cross Gen Battle Pass. Yeah. We just configured that wrong um, because we weren't initially planning on going live yesterday, and then we we're just like, let's just go. Uh, so it, it, you know, had to go back and fix yeah. that. Apologies. I um, mean, it should also fix the Amaterasu Honor Roll skin if you should have owned that skin, yeah. but you do not. Um, so those three skins, if you should own those, you should have those later today, if not during this show. Um, and then uh, there is a uh, an issue if you're a console player. Um, you can get into a state where it seems like you cannot upgrade your starter item. Mm -hmm. um, yep. uh, it, you can upgrade your starter item. It's just not intuitive and it's not good and we're going to fix it. Um, but if you get confused about how to do it, you push uh, uh, you push triangle or Y. Yeah, on the um, controller. On the controller. And then you should be able to get to where you can upgrade the starter. Um, but it's not intuitive and we need to fix it. Yep. So um, those are kind of the bug things that we're looking to fix sooner rather than later. Um, and then in terms of uh, balance things that we're looking to fix sooner rather than later, uh, I guess it's technically a bug, but Anubis's Plague of Locusts, the description does not properly clarify the self-slow values. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be adding that. Uh, the uh, Thanatos, Thanatos is um, currently a little bit weaker than we thought he was going to be based on initial data. Um, so we're going to increase the damage scaling on his Death Scythe um, and also on his Soul Reap. Yep. Um, and... I, I'm not going to give you the exact percentages now because we're we're working we'll through it. We'll have them in the patch you know, notes. And in be in the patch bit, notes. Yeah. But um, we're going to be working on that. Um, Odin's going to get a little bit more of a nerf. Um, we're going to be decreasing his shield health scaling um, and increasing the cooldown slightly. Uh, and Ring of Spears is going to have its cooldown uh, increased a little bit. Um, so definitely understood that he's still a strong god even yep. after what we did. Uh, so so Odin getting nerfed. Um, and Baron Samity, uh, light touch nerf. It seems like the thing that's most OP about him in the first day is Baron's Brew. Um, so I've been loving the Baron's Brew kills, great. though. It's Dude, hilarious. It's so much fun. <laughs> uh, it it kind of gives me, uh, you know, little Baba Yaga vibes. Yeah, even a little though, bit. You know, even though I'm not, bit, yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. Um, so uh, it's going to heal for slightly less per second. Um, and the damage is going to go down um, more so on the base damage than on the scaling is the current pitch. Uh, but we will. We still want it to be a good, useful tool right, that's fun yeah. to use. But just, I think it's a little too strong right now. Yeah, just a little bit. And, and the, you know, those are the the god balance things that we have the for the current first list. Um, other things that we're aware of is like maybe maybe Susano is a little strong. Yeah. You know, um, uh, you know, there's some some other cases that we're aware of that you know we're looking into. But that's kind of the first god balance list that we're looking at that we're going to hopefully get some of that out today. Mm -hmm. um, and if not today, then on Monday. Yeah. Um, we're also looking at item balance as part of this because we can do both of those. Um, and uh, I'm going to read through these relatively quickly because uh, I, you know, it's not as much fun when you don't have something to look at. And maybe we've learned the lesson from <laughs> right, next time. Yeah. We'll have maybe we'll have, we'll have a doc or something. For, yeah, first stream, time. you got to <laughs> give us a little bit of, a little bit of uh, patience here. Um, so, uh, the cost is going to decrease on some anti-heal items. Uh, so Runus Poison, Runus Venom, Runus Ankh, um, Brawler's Beat Stick. Uh, the recipe is going to change, and the cost is going to go down, and the strength is going to go down a little bit, but the penetration is going to go up. So kind of a bigger change for Brawler's Beat Stick. Um, Divine Ruin cost is going to go down. Again, anti-heal. Um, Sunbow Beam uh, cost is probably going to go down a little bit, and the mana regen is going to go uh, up. Um, Avenging Blade uh, is too good, uh, so we're going to turn the strength <laughs> down a little bit on that. Um, uh, Leviathan's Hide, we're talking about. I don't want to talk too much about because there was still some conversation going in design. Yeah. But it feels like maybe we're going to make some changes to Leviathan's Hide. Uh, and uh, Helm of Darkness, um, we're going to make it uh, cheaper uh, but have less int and more protections. Cool. So. Uh, less of a pure caster item and more of a, you know, solo uh, or, you know, something yeah. engagey, right? Right. Because I think it's more fun when you have invis on a character, when you can use it to, like, start a fight mm -hmm. or then just, like, I appear and you're dead. Yeah. Um, that's not a fun play pattern. So uh, I think that, like, hopefully that'll make, make it feel better to play against. Yeah. Cool. So you mentioned the anti-heal items, and it's like, oh, wow, Baron and Yamoja, the kind of the first two, like, true healers yes. in Smite 2. So, yeah, yeah makes sense. That anti-heal, good, could probably do with a little bit of a buff. Though, yeah, though. and um, I was talking about some of the ambassadors earlier today, too, um, asking about uh, anti-shield. Because we also, 
I mean, there have been shields in Smite 2 before now, but I think with Yemoja, people are starting to see it more. Yep. Plus, um, selflessness is just really good oh, at yeah. giving you a lot yeah. of shields. So uh, we're talking about anti-shield. It's probably going to be a little bit further down because we would, we actually need to build the tech to mm -hmm. do anti-shield. Um, but something we're aware of if, if you guys are thinking about anti-shield. Yep. Cool. So Well, lots of bug fixes, lots, lots of balance. Of balance. Yeah. Hopefully headed to you all's way today. today. Hopefully. Uh, if we'll not, keep you all updated. Keep an eye on our social media channels, patch notes, and stuff like that. And, and then, like, Isaiah is uh, currently, like, on the screen. Sorry. he's he's He has to control the stream while talking, so he has it. Oh, I've got a stream deck, Chad. I'm like a pro streamer oh, now. I feel, I feel important. Look out, we can. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, on the uh, on our Steam page, um, we're going to post every bug, f every patch that yeah. we do, um, that and what the bug fixes are. Uh, so, and I'm, I think we're posting them on Twitter too, so, yep. or X or whatever, on our whatever yeah, we'll post them on Twitter, X, Facebook. Yeah, uh, what we're doing right now is uh, on the Smite Two Community Issues Trello board. We've got a new column for live patches. Cool. So, all that stuff will be there as well. Yeah, so a lot of places to learn about this. We're also working on. Um, we want to get this in game, um, so you can see what's happening more more frequently. Um, probably it's going to be uh, in the JSON, what we call the JSON. Um, those little images that rotate yeah. at the bottom right corner of your screen on the homepage, uh, we call JSON because uh, the tech that runs it in the background is uh, like the text is formatted in a JSON format. Mm -hmm. It's a file format, but it's the internal name that has stuck, uh, and I don't think we have a good external. It's short and it. sweet, right? Yeah. Like Easy to say. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, probably in there we'll have more notes about like, you know, we don't want you to have to watch the show every day to know what's changed. Yeah. We don't want you to have to go to Steam to know what's changed or to go to Twitter. You should just be able to know from in-game. So we're working on that. Um, this is a whole new process for us. So, uh, you know, we'll get better at it over time, um, but we're trying to move faster and hopefully yeah. you all see that. I so appreciate it. Sweet. Well, we won't ever, all that stuff. Do you want to take some questions before we get into some of our like, Teasery yeah, future. let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna scroll up here yeah. uh, because I think there were some questions at the very beginning. Um, okay, uh, there was a question. Are you guys planning to add the rest of the starters? Um, I think it's something that we've talked about. Uh, I think that we feel like there are, uh, you know, there there's good options for most gods right now. Um, I think another thing that comes up quick or regularly is like adding both of the upgrade options and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, the big thing about adding new items right now is that pretty much our entire design team is focused on adding gods. Yeah. Um, I, I think earlier this week we had five new gods playable in a playtest on the same day for the first That's time. That's nuts, yeah. Um, so pretty much all of our design resourcing resources are going into gods right now. So in general, I would say I would expect fewer new items over the short term and more... Uh, like updates to existing items, um, just because that's going to allow us to ship more gods. Mm -hmm. And I think people want more gods than more items right now. I think that um, once we get to a higher number of gods, then more items are is great because it adds more build diversity. Right. And yeah. we're actually talking about other systems, which I, I can't talk about yet. <laughs> uh, I, I, we're going to be more open about stuff. I've said you that. said a lot. Everything was off uh, this, yeah, you know? Like. I, but, but this, <laughs> We're brainstorming new systems that give you more ways to play gods yeah. uh, in the future, in the same way that items do. So, um, you know, I don't want to talk too much about that because it's like very early yeah. brainstorming it's, and it's it might early. never ship. You know, um, I like I I would like to talk about things that we intend to ship versus things yeah. that we're still talking about. So, uh, but yeah, no. So so definitely aware that um, people want more starters and more uh, upgrades, but just not in the short term because we're working on gods so much. Yeah. Cool. Um, how many of the planned gods are going to be Smite 2 original gods? So one of the things that will allow us to get to 50 gods quickly um, is, excuse me, is by focusing mostly on updated Smite 1 gods and not on all new gods. Um, bringing over a, do, creating an all new god um, is a significantly larger arc of work for the team. Um, not just because you know, we have to do a, a new, an all new model and we have to do a whole lot of animation and, um, you know, all the art team asks, but also as you've kind of noticed with all the gods that we've brought new to Smite 2 so far, um, they're all very technically demanding, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the next all new god that we're doing is probably the most technically demanding god that we've ever done in Smite. Yeah. Um, and we're continuing, look, continuing to look for ways to push 
what we can do with Smite all new gods, right? Which makes these gods more exciting, but it also makes them harder for us to do. So the thought for us right now is we want to get to 50 as quickly as we can. Um, and as part of that 50, there will be, uh, the current plan is there will be one all new god, which yep. is this one that's very technically uh, demanding. Um, but all the other gods that are on the schedule up until 50 are um, are ported gods, ported gods with, uh, with new features, right, you know, with yeah, plus, plus ones, ones on yep. everyone. They're not exactly like you played them in Smite. Yeah, I saw a lot of people asking, well, they're speeding up gods. I hope that, you know, they get some new features yes, and plus yes. ones. Yes, every god that's going to be ported over will have plus ones and stuff Yeah, like I that. saw Ra being worked on, uh, and his plus one is kind of wild. I yep. don't know if it's actually going to ship. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, there's a – yeah, I don't – should we save us? No, I'm not gonna nah, nah, nah. Uh, no. <laughs> we but yeah, gotta save something. Yeah, you know? gotta, save, gotta save some things. Uh, but yeah, the, the the plus one they're prototyping right now for Raw is very cool. Um, and you know, I think that uh, you guys are gonna be excited with the updates to the gods. Yeah. Um, and then once we get to fifty, then we're gonna go back to a much faster pace of all new gods. Um, because I know that people want all new gods. I would love to be able to give you a bunch of all new gods and a bunch of, you know, ported gods. But we think just getting the base number up is priority number yep. one. And then we'll go back to giving you a lot more new gods. Yep. Um, Non-founders cannot play Baron or Yamoja without using legacy gems. Is this intentional? Um, that is intentional. Yeah. So the way that we are, um, it's kind of intentional. I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, it's kind of intentional. <laughs> so uh, we, people that paid for a founder's pack, they paid at least $30, mm -hmm. right? And one of the things that was included as part of that is effectively the ultimate God pack from Spike One, um, which is like one of the best things ever, yep, right? it's the best deal in the world. Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, you know, when I bought it, I think there were like 20 gods in Smite One, and then, you know, it's, anyway. Yeah. Um, so uh, people have paid money with the expectation that they have paid to unlock all the gods. Um, we decided when we were heading into this closed alpha phase that we didn't want to build out a system to unlock, oh, didn't mean to hit that. <laughs> uh, build out a system to unlock gods, um, like favor or something like that yet, because we have a better plan for mm -hmm. later. Um, but we also didn't want people that have paid this money to feel like they aren't getting their money. Their worth. value. Yeah. yeah. So the the what we've done um, is we've said, if you have paid for a Founders Edition, you just get all the gods. If not, all the other gods are on free rotation, except for the gods released in the most recent update. So last update, it would have been uh, uh, Amaterasu and Nuwa, Nuwa yeah. that you wouldn't have been able to play without um, without a Founders Pack. And then this update, it's Baron and Yemoja. Mm -hmm. And next update, it'll be the two gods in that update. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that feels fair. Um, we just wanted to make sure that people that had paid the money to get in felt like they were getting value for that. Um, and then uh, we are going to be adding a way for you to unlock gods for free, um, not using legacy gems in the relatively near future, yeah. you know, in the next couple of months, I would say. Um, so it's not there yet, uh, but there will be a better system for this. Um, Isaiah, you want to take one? I, uh, I'm talking I so lost much, where you scrolled. Oh, uh. I'm like, uh, okay, next one is, uh, oh, there's an audio issue where after you defeat somebody, the sound gets muffled for like 10 seconds from Dynamic Saucine. Um, uh, is that happening to you in Arena more so? Because I did we, see Pond talking about we, this we, earlier. We were yeah. looking at an, an issue this morning where that's happening more often in Arena. If it's happening to you in not Arena, that's actually really interesting to us because we haven't been able to see that that happen in Conquest. Um, so uh, definitely let us know. Um, let's see. Uh, I couldn't sell my starter item on console, only able to upgrade. Um, yeah, so uh, is, is that... Before leaving the base at, in the very beginning, mm -hmm. you buy your starter item yeah. and you can't sell it? Um, if so, let us know. Otherwise, um, starter items work a little bit differently in Smite 2 in that they have their own unique item slot. So um, once you've bought a starter item and left base, you should not be able to sell your starter item. It's just something that you will always have that you can then upgrade eventually, but is not a, uh, it's not like a normal item yep. in Smite 2. Um, I see a question. Are we getting Fafnir? Eventually. But uh, eventually. unfortunately, I forget who I was talking to yesterday. But yes. uh, uh, your boy is, is not that popular, and he is technically demanding. So yes. I would say on, on the list of Fafnir compared to all the other classic Smite gods, he's probably towards the lower end of the list. Yeah. Uh, 
so in terms of I, I was very interested. I, I've been looking at all of these community polls around like who are the next gods we should add, and mm-hmm. um, you know, and we've been cross referencing that with like what are the most played gods because a lot of times, um, you know, our vocal community and our community that just plays a lot of Smite don't always line up. Usually, it's pretty similar, but sometimes there's some weird niches. And mm-hmm. on the Reddit poll for what the next god we should add is. I think Fafnir was like the top voted That's next insane. god because Reddit's <laughs> just like, I love Fafnir. Fafnir has always been one of the least popular gods in the game. Even when he was like super buffed in Smite 1 recently and like super OP, yeah. I think the best he ever did was get to be like the top of the bottom quarter of gods in terms of play rate. Um, so he's just not a very popular god. That's not to say he doesn't have his niche. That's not to say we don't want to bring him over to Smite 2 eventually. But when you're in this like this zone of it's going to be a lot of work to bring you over because you have multiple models that we probably need to make. You know, I don't want to speak for the art director, but yeah. probably, probably need to make more <laughs> updates to those than some other gods. Yeah. Right. You're not very popular. And th- but there is a segment of the community that absolutely loves you. Like that's hard for us to weigh that and be like, oh, is it worth doing that if it takes twice as much work as getting, if we get two other gods, should we get the two other gods, you right. know? Yeah. So definitely aware the community wants Fafnir, but um, probably not immediately. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I saw one that we missed. It was, it was not really a question, but Anubis alt bug, after he dies, his alt stays. I just died to dead Anubis alt. That's... I don't know if we've heard I've never that seen, one. That I one. seen that one. I haven't seen that one. QA will investigate after yeah. this, though. I, I will mention it to them. So appreciate letting us know. I apologize for that insane death, though, by the way. Yes. That is, that's that is nuts. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Uh, let's see. Um, what's the next question? Oh, you can't five sack on PlayStation. I assume that's a Sony problem. When you look at the invite, it says you can't join because max players is 4-4, but in-game it says 4-5. We'll have to look at that. Yeah. yeah. That's odd. That is very is odd. Is that for all is modes? That, yeah, is that for all modes, or is that... Um, no. Could be something configured incorrectly on on the back end for you know team size. Yes, for yeah a specific. But we can definitely yeah. take a look at that um, and see. Um, it says all modes. Okay, all we'll, modes. We'll, we'll take a look for sure. Okay, yeah, we'll check it out. Um, and then uh, uh, we have a question. Uh, anyone else have an issue where some of the skins from Smite One have come across, but others have not? So not every cross gen skin from Smite One has had its Smite Two version right. created yet. So if you go into Smite 2 and you see a skin that's in Smite 2 that you should own, you feel like you should own because you own it in Smite 1, um, and you know, you've know you been in the game for like five minutes mm-hmm. uh, because sometimes it can take a few minutes for something to process, and you're not talking about the three skins that we fixed today, which are um, the uh, two in the most recent Battle yeah. Pass. Uh, Oni King Hades, Wing Terror Odin, and Honor Roll Amaterasu. Yes, so we fixed yeah. those three today or we will fix them later today. If you're having any issues with skins other than that that are already in Smite 2 that you own in Smite 1 and you're not getting, please contact our customer support yep. and they will be able to help you. Um, but uh, those, those should be really small numbers of people that are affected by mm-hmm. that. Um, if you're talking about skins that we haven't ported over yet, um, there there just are some that we haven't ported yeah. over yet. And we're actually going to be slowing down on the number of skins that we're porting over. Not, not that we're stopping um but because we're working on getting gods over more quickly yeah. uh our art team is really focused on moving over gods right now and uh we would rather move quickly on that on gods, and yeah. then get back to skins once we're once we're more towards 50 number uh, number 50 yeah. gods see someone in chat saying they just got on a roll amaterasu hey we did it yeah nice thanks blake and johnny you're the best <laughs> um Cool. Uh, let's see. Um, Gold Fury achievements don't work on Steam. Yeah, Gold Fury achievements are a lot of the achievements are broken right now. Yeah. Um, it's a known issue, and we are going to fix that. Um, Sunbow Beam. Sunbeam Bow. Sunbeam Bow. Sunbow Beam. No. Sunbeam. Bow. Sunbeam. Sunbeam. I don't know. I, what, I forget what the default name is. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you considered making the mana drain a fixed value? Same with the HP on Eye of the Storm. That's an interesting idea. You can run it by That's design. See what they yeah. think. Um, let's see. Uh, um, are gods missing out of combat animations? Something that'll be touched on later in development. Um, Zeus and Onher lost theirs. Emoja and Chalk never had any. 
Um, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but I can check with the animation team. Yeah, I'm making notes actively. Yes. Uh, for sure. I did see a Reddit thread earlier yeah, about I the saw... Emoja um, non-combat animations, though. Yeah, that's, um, that's interesting. We'll definitely have to look into that. Um, are you guys think thinking of making the Conquest map more interactive after January? Like rain, thunder, dark theme maps. Um, yeah, I, I think this is the first version of Conquest. Um, there, uh, we kind of needed a base version that was relatively similar to Smite 1 in order to be able to feel what's what's good, what's bad. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, does, does it feel like Smite 1? Yeah. Um, and even to the point where it's been really interesting from a dev perspective where, you know, w we have people that are like, just bring over all of the old objectives from Smite 1. Yep. And then we have other people that are like, we don't want anything we, old. We want all new. Yes. Yeah. So it's been really challenging for us to like balance that, mm -hmm. right? Like how do we make sure that we're giving people some existing old favorites, but adding new things at the same time? And I feel like we kind of did that in this patch. Yeah, with the totem, right? Yeah, yeah, because we have the totem, which works like the warhorn, and we added the uh, the teleport, teleporters, which are yeah. all new. Um, so we're trying to play that balance. Um, I, currently, most of our environment art resources are focused on making Joust. Um, mm -hmm. I said yesterday that uh, Joust is going to be an all new art set map. Um, it's the same layout as Chinese Joust. Basically, there's a couple tweaks, and there's some new objectives and stuff. But basically, the same layout as the classic. Chinese Joust that everybody loved, not the Jade Corruption one, yeah. the first one, um, but with an all new art set. So mm -hmm. most of our art resources for environment are going towards that right now. Once we're through that, then we're gonna look at uh, what we can do to kind of take Conquest to the next level. Um, there's some really interesting pitches that uh, involve things like weather, involve other things, um, but I don't wanna like, I don't wanna say this is exactly what we're doing, yeah. but yes, we are looking to evolve Conquest uh, as, as we can. Um, and we're especially like, even just for, you know, for January, uh, you know, for the new season, there's a lot of stuff that we're already considering for that, just in terms of like ex editing the existing map. Um, things like the path to red buff kind of sucks right yeah. now. We know that it's something that's on our list. Um, and there's there's some other things as well. Cool. Well, we plan for an hour for these shows, Alex, and I want to make sure that we we have enough time to talk we about. We talk what about we this, and then we'll come about. back to more questions. Yeah, yeah. So. Chat, to preface you all, mm. uh, we'll talk about this a little bit. It's your first kind of uh, early look slash teaser slash we want to hear from you yeah. on some things happening in Smite 2. So uh, let's talk about Mulan. We're starting the work to get Mulan into Smite 2. So yes. for the, our, the OGs in chat, you know there's some history around Mulan and how she was revealed in Smite 1 and there's a little bit of controversy about her base appearance. We've been kind of split internally, going back and forth. We've had some chats with ambassadors. So we want to hear from you today and talk about what you all think Mulan's base appearance should be in Smite 2. So I'll preface this. We're going between base Mulan in Smite 1 or the mysterious warrior skin yes. that she has where she's kind of masked and disguised. So to even preface this a little bit more, this is going to be like a package type of deal. So whichever version that we go with, whether it's the standard base Mulan or the mysterious base, mysterious warrior Mulan, that will be the model that gets the Ascension Pass treatment for all the Ascension Pass skins and Smite 2. And the voice pack will be the default uh, voice pack in Smite 2. So it would be either the standard Mulan voice pack or the mysterious warrior Mulan voice pack, depending on what we decide here, I guess today. Uh, so, Alex, anything else want, you want to talk about? I'll yeah. bring up some options here. Yeah. In the chat. So, what so, are you thinking? Uh, yeah. So, so these are the two options. If you have not seen these skins, um, and I, two things to say, I guess, is that um, both we are going to bring both of them to Smite Two. Yes. But one of them needs to be the default, and the other one's going to be essentially free. I don't know if yeah, it'll be actually. It'll be free, like a free. But, yeah. Like, you um, always have access to it, basically. But we don't want to do two sets of uh, ascension skins. And we don't want to have uh, because it, that it just doesn't work with our tech, and yeah. um, we need to we need to pick a, a default that people will just like load in as by default. So um, we're going to put up a poll. I'm going to uh, tweet it right now. Okay, actually. Isaiah's going to tweet a poll right now from Smite Game. I'm assuming. Yeah, from yep. Smite Game. Okay, yep. from Smite Game. Um, and uh, you, you guys can vote which one you guys think is better. Um, 
like I said, it's it is a package deal. So you're gonna have either, uh, and it's not a Twitter poll. You just have to click on the link. Yeah, from there'll Twitter. be a Google form. Yeah, so it's a Google form. If you don't have a Twitter account, you can still participate. I'll drop the link to the Google form in chat here in just a second. To Sweet. You. Um, so, uh, and the whole reason why we got into this mess. Can I tell the story? <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, for marketing, we thought it would be cool to do like a neat little release campaign for Mulan and mm -hmm. we teased that she's coming. And um, and so we made the image on the right, option two, um, literally just as a teaser that Mulan was coming. Yeah. And everybody was like, oh, that's Mulan. They just they just showed it and we're, and we're like, oh no, oh no, we have failed as a marketing yeah. team. We have set the wrong <laughs> expectations. People think this is what Mulan is going to be. Um, and then when the in-game uh, version of Mulan looked different, uh, a lot of people were upset and they preferred the initial thing that we showed. All right, chat, tweet is live. Tweet is live. So um, so please vote. Uh, we are not going to uh, be changing the models to, like too much other than obviously updating and making sure it looks better um, from these two options. So I saw somebody say, hey, number two, but with a different mask. Uh, you, not, not the vote here. The vote here is, do you like option one or option two? I think we have two really strong options here. Um, and I think there's good arguments to go either way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I personally, I like the, see, for me it's hard, I like the voice pack on option one better, and I like the skin on option two better. Yeah, see, we were going back, and we, we pitched this to Ambassadors last week, and it was kind of the same thing, like there are elements of both that you love and wish could be the default, but the way that we've got to go forward, yes, it just doesn't make sense because if you mix the voice pack, like it doesn't necessarily match the vibe with the masked versus unmasked. So, hey, we're doing it live. This poll is going to be up over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll keep an eye on it over the weekend, and we'll we'll revisit on Monday, and uh, we'll share the results and uh, and go from there. And there we go. Yeah. Um, and just just uh, so everybody kind of gets an idea of timeline on this, right? Um, the idea is that Mulan is uh, one of the 50 uh, yeah. currently. So um, she will be uh, in the game by the end of January is the, is the plan. I forget exactly where she is in in the order of the 50. Right, yeah. uh, but um, so this is something that isn't going to be in the game tomorrow. But um, we want your feedback on what we should do eventually. Um, we also get a lot of questions a lot of time. Why don't you guys do votes on what gods even you should be doing mm -hmm. and, and whatnot? Um, I think that's maybe something I can talk about just real yeah, quick while, sure. we're, while we're on the subject is uh, from the moment we start working on bringing a god over until the, the moment that we're done, for most gods, it's it can be as much as six months of work, right? Um, because it has to go through a lot of different departments. And we've gotten faster, uh, and that's part of what's allowing us to move faster yeah. here. But it sucks to vote on something and then wait six months to see it in game. Yeah. This was kind of the issue we saw with the old tier five skin voting and, and whatnot, where it was like, People voted on something, and then by the time it came out, they were bored of it, and they they were like, oh, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. right? Um, so uh, that's one of the reasons. The other reason is that like each god has a lot of hidden work attached to it, yeah. right? And we try and balance in order to be able to move, even at the pace that we were moving at, the two gods every three three weeks pace. Um, we have to try and balance like things that are going to be hard on different departments, uh, so that it's not like there's just an unachievable amount of work, right? You know, um, one of the most requested gods. I will give a, a negative spoiler, uh, which uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, but one of the most requested gods in Smite Two is Scylla. Yeah, Scylla is arguably the most artistically technical challenging god to bring over to Smite Two because of the way her legs work mm -hmm. and her uh, dogs. Yeah, you know? uh, it is. She is incredibly hard to bring over. So in order for us to get to 50, she couldn't be in the one, first, in 50. The first yeah. 50. But we know that she's like one of the community's most yeah. requested gods. One of the most popular gods in the entire Smite 1 roster. Yeah. So, so we want to get her pretty quickly after that first 50, but we can't ship her in the same patch where we're shipping, you know, three or four other right, gods yeah. because it's, it's it, we can't get the work done, right? Um, but you know, if you if you missed yesterday, some of the other gods that we said they're going to be in this first fifty, you're going to get Ra, you're going to get Poseidon, you're going to get I think we said Kepri. You said Thor. I said yeah. Thor. Thor. Thor has a new model too. He looks sick. Oh yeah. Ra. Ha Ra actually. Has model Ra got too. a little bit of a glow yeah. up too. Yeah. Um, so a lot of really good gods um, that are are very exciting. Um, I'll spoil one other one too. That's it's pretty upcoming soon. Cool. And it's Go in for development. It. Um, we've we've had some people saying that there aren't enough like. Uh, you know, there there isn't a jungler that fits the like basic, basic attack, attack jungler. jungler. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, so one of the upcoming gods is going to be Nemesis, yep. um, who uh, kind of fits that basic attack mm -hmm. and also has a lot of other utility. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love Nemesis and Smite 1 because you can build her like so many different oh, yeah. ways. You can do crit. You can do basic attack. You can go power pin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when, awesome. I'm a, when, I'm a, uh, when I'm console gaming Nemesis, like I'm just like... Give me, uh, you know, give me power and, and pen, mm -hmm. and I'm just like I'm just hitting my 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 slash, yep. you know, and I'm I'm debuffing the uh, the bad guy, and you know it's a uh, it's pretty fun, it's great. So, um, yeah, so lots of lots of exciting gods coming here. Um, I think almost everybody on this list uh, of the first fifty is pretty fan favorite. Yeah, um, I think maybe the only one that might be controversial. I'm gonna spoil another one. Just go for I'm it. Like, yeah, and this is a more distant one, <laughs> um, but there's no reason for us to not tell you guys this stuff, right? Oh, because yeah. We, we aren't doing any work to make sure things don't get data mined right now because that's time spent not working on making the game better. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff is getting data mined in a way that d makes it not look good anyway. So might as well just talk about it, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Kabraken is one of the gods that's on the list as well. Um, and Kabraken is, is surprisingly actually pretty popular, um, but people don't, he doesn't have a lot of perception around being right, popular. Yeah. Um, and he works, uh, uh, but he's a good god for us to bring over because uh, just the both the difficulty that goes into bringing him over um, and us being able to get him done. And also he can be played in a lot of different roles, yeah. right? He can be solo, he can be support, he can be jungle. Mm -hmm. And adding gods that work in multiple roles makes the roster feel even bigger right. than if we yeah. just say, like, Cuckoo is a mid. Cuckoo is never going to be played in any <laughs> role except for mid. I mean, like, there were some really niche times where he could do other things, but 99% mm -hmm. of the time, he's a mid. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, exciting gods in this list. Yeah. I think he's maybe the least exciting. So if you're even excited by Kabraken, then um, you're going to be excited about everything. That's there we go. Ever. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, Alex, chat was pretty split about Mulan. I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. brutal. <laughs> chat, come on. This is this is the thing that AJ feared the most. AJ, yeah. was like, AJ was like, guys, we shouldn't do a poll. They're just going to be split. And they're going to be angry with whatever we choose. And we're like, no, we should ask the community. So we asked the community. Yeah, um, yeah and I think one of the caveats in the poll was like, we, we we really kind of want like an overwhelming kind of result if we want to make the shift yes. to Mysterious Warrior. If if things kind of seem a little bit more split, we're probably going to lean more to the, the classic base model mm -hmm. in Smite 1. But like you said, we just wanted to talk to the community about this just because we know Mulan's past and we were split on it internally. So why not talk to the players and hear a little bit more about what they think? Yep. Um... Cool. Uh, are there? Uh, we have more questions. Um, I can scroll back up and answer more questions. Uh, was there anything else that we had to talk about on the show, or should we just go back to questions? I, did, I, I just want to make sure. Go back to questions. I think right. we hit everything. We talked about hot fixes. We talked about plans for an upcoming patch with balance and more bug fixes. Yeah. Talked about Mulan. We did a little bit of recap on our plans for Alpha. So hey, let's just spend the rest of the time talking to chat. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll up and. Uh, or should we just should we just go with the live questions? I'm just gonna go with the live questions, yeah. and if we missed your question, ask it again. ask it again. Yeah, right. Because otherwise, I'm gonna be too far away. Um, okay. So any Lancelot news? Uh, no immediate Lancelot news. Sorry, he's probably not in the first fifty. He's one of those more complicated and less popular yeah. gods. Um, let's see. Uh, we've got uh, stand switcher in the first fifty. Uh, yes. 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 Uh, there will be a stand switcher in the first fifty. Um, there will probably only be one though because we have to build out the tech for stance switching. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we have that tech, then it's easier to, like, it's so weird, the little pieces of tech that you think, oh, they just should have that in Smite 2. We don't have it, right? right? Like, <laughs> um, like, one of the things that we were talking about uh, getting the list of gods together to come over was like, there's a lot of gods in Smite 1 that have an eight-way dash, mm -hmm. right? We don't have an eight-way dash in Smite yeah. 2 yet. And it's like, oh, well, that god would be really easy if we could get an eight-way dash, yeah. but we don't have an eight-way dash, so uh, is it worth doing? You know, like all that little stuff that like seems easy is always it's new, right? Yeah. We have to rebuild everything. Um, cool. Set can play four roles. Set set cannot play four <laughs> roles, dude. Like, I appreciate the 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 propaganda, yeah. but yeah, set. I don't know. I I feel like I've seen set in. <laughs> and maybe for, in in Smite One SPL, I'm pretty sure he's been played in at least four roles. Maybe, but. maybe. Uh, <laughs> Set Set is also literally the least popular god in Smite yeah, One right now uh, by a lot. Rip your boy Set by yeah. a lot. He is he is like most gods are like. There's kind of like a very smooth curve. Set is like bottom mm -hmm. of the basement. And I don't know if he's not strong right now. I haven't seen him in games recently, probably because you know nobody's playing him. Yeah. But um, yeah, he like Set is not on the immediate roster either. Um, but is is a god that. Like all the gods, we want to get over eventually. Right. 
Um, chat, I like transparency. Should I be concerned? Hopefully not. No, this is why we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. We want to be more transparent and we don't want you to be concerned because the truth is that like, you know, Isaiah and me and a hundred other people are sitting in this building. Well, some of us aren't sitting here. Yeah. We're either sitting here or working from home every day to make Smite 2 amazing. And what has sucked is we have not told you about it. Yes. So exactly. we're trying to tell you about it and uh, let you know what we're working on and that we hear you and we're addressing your problems. Um, I remember reading an interview where you said Sylvanas was late on the list. Is this still you the case? You specifically. I said it. Uh, so, so the reason why this came up, I was doing an interview with the media, trying to get them excited about Smite 2 so they would write some articles. And um, uh, I said that Sylvanas was my favorite god, because Sylvanas is my favorite god in Smite 1. I said that in my interview to work here. That was one of the questions. <laughs> Scott Zier interviewed me. Oh, my god! And his question was, who's your favorite Smite god? Because I... I I think I was one of the few people that was interviewing for the position that played any Smite. So they were like testing me on my Smite mm, knowledge. Yeah. And he was like, who's your favorite Smite god? And I said, Sylvanas. And I gave him this whole spiel about it. Um, so anyway, in the response to this, I said, Sylvanas. And I was like, but yeah, I'm sad. He's probably not going to be coming anytime soon to Smite too. Um, he still isn't like immediately on the roster. Uh, he is more popular than a lot of Guardians. Right. So he'll be, probably be like sooner than later, mm -hmm. but definitely not in the first 50. Um, and I don't really want to go like God by God here. You know, right, there's a yeah. lot of questions about. If we go like, God by God, we'll, yeah. we'll get the whole roster plan out. You yeah. Know, like. um, so uh, uh, there's a question: Are there plans to add AMD FSR during the alpha? So all of that uprising stuff, um, I think, is something that we're interested in that we can look at. Um, one of the problems with that stuff uh, is that um, it. So there's there's two different things that happens with frames, and I'm not the most technical guy, and you probably know more than me, so I'm probably uh, mansplaining something to you that you don't need to hear. But um, there's both the raw frame count and there's frame pacing. And what that frame generation does usually is it kind of screws up the frame pacing. So it's it's a solution that doesn't always make the game really feel smoother, especially for multiplayer games. Like it t generally tends to work better in single player games in my experience. Yep. Um, it's something that's on our list and we will get to eventually. Mm -hmm. Will it be in during alpha? I'm not 100% sure. Um, it hasn't been a, a major priority for us right now. Yeah. Um, if you guys feel like FSR and what, what are the other ones? Uh, I forget the name of the NVIDIA. NVIDIA's one, yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, there's there's even like an Xbox specific one now, yeah. X, uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, if if you guys feel like that's like the number one thing keeping you from playing Smite Two, then like let us know, and and we'll talk to the dev team about it. But for us, it feels like there's other things that are much more important to be working on with our dev time currently. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, Pick a question. There's so many questions. I actually don't think we're going to be able to answer all I these. I know, right? We'll, we'll work through as many of them as we can here. Oh, my goodness. I just refreshed, and I got, like, a, a wall of yeah, questions. Yeah, same, this same. Insa insane. No, I dude, I appreciate you all being so engaged, this is, though. Yeah, this is awesome. We're going to be here three, t three times a week to answer questions. So even if we don't get to your question today, uh, you know, we'll be here on Monday, Wednesday, Friday next week. Yeah. Answer more questions. So, uh, Question. Are you going to add new achievements for Steam? Like in Smite 1, there were two achievements for each god. So I would love to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that was a challenging thing to do for Smite 1 from a technical standpoint. Um, and I, I will say we will consider it. Um, I think that you do kind of get a somewhat similar feel now with some of these stat trackers in the Ascension right, Pass. Yeah. So um, it, it, it's the, the single biggest problem with it, just to be completely transparent with you guys, is that if we change a, the way a god works that invalidates an achievement, then to change that achievement is almost impossible. Yeah. And we are left with broken achievements that you can never achieve. We have to get like, we have to like go to, not to the CEO, but like very senior people at Microsoft and, and Sony to let us change an achievement. Yeah. And it takes months to get it approved. It is, it sounds dumb, but it is, really technically really like procedurally yeah. annoying um and so if we make achievements that are things that we think are never going to break even though we did that in the past yeah. and they still broke, or to a character that we're never going to change which is that's not gonna not happen, gonna happen right yeah right so that's one of the big issues with adding more achievements every time versus things that are just in game mm -hmm. that we are in full control over and we can change when we want to um so definitely something to think about uh but you know that's kind of the challenges that we face there uh, Jithens asked, do you think it's possible to add Band-Aid solutions to something like having text chat? Uh, so, 
uh, I would ask Jithens if he's been drinking water. Um, <laughs> and uh, so text chat is something that we're well aware of that we need. Yeah. Um, I literally just had a conversation about text chat before I got into this room. Um, there are like three different solutions to text chat that we are exploring at this point in time. Um, we want to get text chat in by the time, you know, by January. Mm -hmm. Like, and the reason why we're seeing a lot of stuff is by January is because like the way that our sprints are planned out or our, excuse me, our development pipelines played out, we're really like planned out through January. And then after that, we have like more nebulous plans. Yeah. Like it's more like TBD. So it's on our more firm immediate plan that we want text chat. Um, the version of text chat that we will most likely have when it first comes out is there will be text chat in pre-match lobby, there'll be text chat in game, there'll be text chat in post-match lobby. Mm -hmm. It's probably not gonna be whispers, there's probably not gonna be party text chat on the home screen because right. everybody's just in Discord anyway and it's kind of a waste of time and it takes us a lot of work to do. So, um, but we do wanna get text chat in for those three specific places uh, by January. Um, if we just said, here's text chat, and we didn't have to worry about also having some kind of moderation and uh, you know bad language filters mm -hmm. and all of that, we could do it really quickly. But we don't wanna do that because like, one of the, I, I hate that Smite 2 doesn't have text chat, but one of the good parts about Smite 2 not having text chat is that the amount of toxicity is like so low. Yeah. <laughs> people, people aren't like BMing you every game, it's great. Um, so we wanna make sure that when we bring some text chat back, it's not just, uh, it's, it's not just a shit show of people yelling at each other and yeah. saying racial slurs um, with, you know, uh, two characters changed because it'll evade our language filter. Yeah. So uh, we don't want that. That's not what our community is about. Um, and that's not what this game is about. So yeah. we're making sure that we put the right systems in place before we cool. get that on. Saw something from Kepler. Is the Jokey Loki skin going to be purchasable again? Yes. So uh, all of the skins in Smite 2 will be purchasable yeah. again. I think that the message that we heard from you guys um, was uh, we screwed up, right? To be to be transparent, um, we uh, had I think I, I still think a pretty good plan for how we should be pricing new content, um, and maybe there were a few things that were wrong, but I think in general, it, if you look at like dollars to dollars, um, it's pretty equivalent pricing with Smite 1. It's cheaper in some ways. It's maybe a little bit more expensive on some things. Um, but considering we've never raised the price of gems over the years, right, it, it, it felt pretty pretty fair to me. Yeah. Um, but the thing that we, uh, that we did a bad job with was we didn't pay enough attention to how much things are priced for in Smite 1 that you could also buy in Smite 1. So um, do not clip this and use this as a promise for me, <laughs> please. That's, that's the please point of this, add the context, the, chat. The point if of this show it, is, is for us yeah. to talk with you and not like to make promises. But um, but like what we're talking about for like Jokey Loki and for skins that have Smite 1 pricing, um, legacy gems are worth twice as much as Smite 1, or excuse me, uh, things in, in diamonds are are roughly, roughly twice, twice yeah. as much as the gem price, right? And we doubled your legacy gems if you bought a founder's pack to give you that equivalent value. Yeah. But what we didn't do is we didn't price things the same. Mm -hmm. So if something has a Smite 1 price, um, the idea is that we will price it in Smite 2 for just twice that price, which would be the diamond or legacy gem equivalent. Yeah. So if Loki joke, Jokey Loki is 400 gems in Smite 1, he would be 800 legacy gems or diamonds in Smite 2. Um, so that's the that would be the equivalent price. Right. So the idea is that we would do that uh, so you would be able to get your full value out of your legacy gems um, and uh, get things at the same price that you paid yep. because we screwed that up. All right. Oh, man. I'm afraid to read that one and open the can of worms. Uh, but I said <laughs> no, it already. Uh, talking about text chat, what about all chat? I know we've got, we're actually split internally, chat. You would you would be surprised. We have some all chat enthusiasts internally at the studio that are really pushing for it. Um, it technically, it's not challenging. I think it's really just a toxicity feature, right? Uh, all chat is very bad for, for toxicity <laughs> purposes, right? Like, um, I think that the current Smite 1 solution of text chat with your team in game and all chat in the post-match lobby is a pretty good solution. Mm -hmm. Um, it, you know, if th there have been talks about, should we do more all chat? But I think probably the toxicity concerns outweigh 
the benefit of being because like why do you want to talk to the other team in the middle of a match yeah. is it is there a, is there a valid reason other than to make fun of them or to criticize them or to support them in their trashing of a teammate who isn't doing well which is another version of you know trashing and, uh, and I have played games where this happens and uh, it's arguably fun when you're not the person getting yelled at but when you're the person getting yelled at it feels like the worst thing on yeah. the planet um and i don't i personally don't think it's the right move for the game um but yeah um yeah meet me at warhorn at 1v1. <laughs> yeah what does that yeah, solve what does that solve just win the game if you want to preview better oh, win man. the game right like anyway uh cool um so why give post chat then? There isn't a reason to talk to anyone after the game piece out. So I think that's actually different. I think that after the game, um, what we've seen looking at post chat, post game chat, um, there a lot of times people just want to say like good game to the other team, and they want to say like, oh man, that fight at Fire Giant was sick, and like or like sometimes there is a little bit more like trolling, mm -hmm. but it's not running for the whole game. And if you don't want to be a part of it, you can leave yeah. the post game lobby immediately. Whereas if you're if you're in game and somebody's just like all you can do is just mute all the people on the game and that's you know I mean I guess that's a solution but it's you can't just leave a game of Smite um, I mean you can but you're then a deserter and a horrible right. person yeah. um, <laughs> so we we uh, we choose, we suggest you do not leave, leave a game of Smite um, so but you can leave the post game lobby so that's one of the reasons why we think it's okay there. Um, yeah, a lot of toxicity questions. Toxicity yeah. is, is tough in games, man. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think like whenever you're, uh, you know, I'm I'm an old man now. Um, <laughs> and the thing that like I, I have to think about is that like, you know, not everybody playing a game has had the same life experience as you. Somebody might be having a bad day. They're taking it out in the game. They don't, they don't know better. Right. Um, I try and be kind and gracious, but uh, it's, it's a lot. A question of 120 frames per second console mode. Um, that would be awesome. I think we just aren't there yet in terms of optimizations, yeah. right? Like, uh, we're continuing to improve the performance, um, but uh, we just aren't to where we can yeah. have a steady optimization is one right of those now. things to where it's it's a lifelong thing for yeah. for a game, right? We're something we're just going to be consistently working on from from update to update. Yeah, and I know. Um, on Series S in particular, we've had some people saying it. Uh, you know, there's some graphical issues and whatnot. Um, if you are experiencing any like Series S specific issues, um, please let us know. Mm -hmm. Like we have some Series S's in the office, we play on it. Um, it definitely doesn't look as good as the other platforms. It's slower than the other platforms, so it's never going to look as good as the other yeah. platforms. Um, but it should look better than it does because there are some specific bugs to it. Um, I get that we're not doing proper classes anymore, but there, is there a plan to use the categories or something else to filter during God selection? It's not a big deal right now, but as the roster grows, there needs to be some sort of filter system. Yes. A good um, question. Yes, uh, our UI designer was actually showing me mockups for this yesterday, um, and they look really good. Uh, so I think um, what we want to do is that uh, we know what role you're going to play when you get into a conquest mat because we have role selection now, right? And what we want to do is we want to say you're playing solo. And then we want to filter the list of gods to show you here are gods that traditionally work well in solo. Yeah. And then you can tab over and look at all gods. You can look at gods that traditionally work well in mid or traditionally work well in carry or whatnot. And you can see um, the different uh, like different subsets of gods. But you can make a lot more informed decision, especially as a new player, of like, if I pick a, one of these gods, they will work in this role yeah. at least, um, which is just kind of obscure tribal knowledge in Smite 1, right? Like, if you see Ao Kuang, Ao Kuang is a mage, so I can play him mid, right? No. I mean, you know, uh, like, there's there's all of these, like, really difficult to learn things that there's no sense gatekeeping that basic knowledge that I can go Google in three seconds on my phone out of the game. So if it's something that I can Google in three seconds on my phone, it should probably just be in the game is, is, our, yeah. is our general idea. Um, because we don't want to make it just worse for the people that don't want to be Googling. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, the idea is that we're gonna we're gonna have the kind of role information, um, and then we're also gonna let you uh, sort uh, by um, any of the tags that we have right now. 
um, which we've been getting some feedback. Some of the tags maybe are the wrong words for things. Yeah. Um, let us know what you think. This is our first out at the system. The idea was not to have strict classes like we did in Smite 1, but to give you these words that give you a sense of what can this god do. Yeah, what the god is, is good at. Yes. Um, so please let us know. Um, and like, so it's not really subclasses as test, test die says, test die. Um, you know, it's like, okay, there's these set of three tags should give you a sense of what is a god. So, yeah. yeah. Um, is the role thing going to be aggregating what people play them in, or is it just set in advance? Um, so to start, it's going to be uh, designers are going to set, and gods will be able to have multiple roles. So, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know if she's still good. Bologna was a good jungler at one point in Smite 2's life. I haven't tried to I haven't seen recently. some Bologna jungle during the uh, the Road to Vegas, for sure. Yeah, yeah. so so Bologna could be listed as both a solo and a jungle um, and appear in both lists. Um, or, uh, you know, and then ideally, once we get a little bit further along, we would have that automatically populate based on like Max's data that he's yeah. getting in the background. Um, but just for the first out, it's going to be a lot quicker for us to have a designer driven mm -hmm. list. And then we can update that very easily. Uh, if we put somebody in the wrong list, you know, you all can let us know. We'll be on the show yeah. all, three times a week. So cool. All right. Time for one more question before more we, question. we dip out okay. and, and get back to work. Kind of back-to-back -back questions on auto builds here. So do you want to do that as the last yeah, question? Or yeah, yeah, let's do, do this. Yeah. Have, I'll pick one and you pick one. Just All right, cool. Two questions. Yeah, it's two questions. Okay, so I'm going right, cool. to talk about auto builds real quick. Cool. Um, so uh, we want to get custom builds into the game. Um, we're debating internally whether it is the correct approach to just get the shortest path to a custom build in-game which would probably be you go into jungle practice, you build a full set of six items, and you click something to save it as your custom build. So it wouldn't be, we, we don't have the ability to just put like the item store builder UI in the home screen easily, right? So that would be the quickest path to doing it. Um, the uh, more complicated path, and the one that I would like us to get to eventually, but to be transparent, probably not gonna happen in the next three months, you know, yeah. um, is for people to be able to create their own in-game item builds that they can share with other people that have individual notes on items and uh, you know, sec like you know, we have headers in our mm -hmm. um, in our items list. Like you could put a group of things under a custom header and whatnot, and be able to share that with people because I think that that would really help um, understand the intricacies of the item system and how you maybe want to build different things in different situations versus just a preset pre-recorded, yep. here's the six item build. Um, so that's what we really want, but it's going to be further out. So the question is, do we need to get the, you know, I've recorded my six item build for this character sooner, or would you rather us not waste time on that and just work to get towards that, the, you know, the, the full item build system sooner, even though that's like, again, it's probably like, I, I don't even want to give you, it's after January of next year, yeah. most likely, just to be transparent. So, um, so it seems like most people are leaning towards the second cool. as a 2025 goal. Cool. cool. So, um, you know, obviously we'll keep it. I'm sure we're going to get the same questions a lot on this show. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll keep saying the things and getting more feedback and, and going forward. Yeah. So, um, uh, and go for it, Isaiah. All right, Your cool. question. Uh, so my question, actually, too, kind of back to back, and I kind of deal with the same thing. Go One person asked about any plans for for battle passes in Smite Two, and then the follow up to that was limited time events to where you can just kind of play games and grind out for like rewards, like badges and stuff like that. And I think the answer is yes. We're definitely looking at some of that stuff. I know the play uh, the team has been talking a lot about some changes to those kinds of systems in Smite 2 yeah. uh, to make sure that we have ways that people can log in and engage with the game and get rewards just by playing. That's something that we know is super important. Things like cosmetics and, and player expression, showing off you know your personal style in game is mm -hmm. definitely something super important. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's going to be before January. Not tomorrow. Yeah, no. not tomorrow, <laughs> but definitely something that we're, we're looking at for sure. Yeah, and um, uh, just again, like to be transparent about our, our development process here. Like um, initially, we were thinking that uh, the battle pass equivalent was something that we had to get done for January. And through feedback from y'all, we decided, no, we need to focus on gods. We yep. need to focus on quality. We need to focus on all these other things and not not waste time, but not spend time on building out a battle pass system first. So that's something that um, you know we're going to start on later and we'll come 
you know, maybe March or something yeah. of next year, right? Um, and then in terms of like in-game events, we are talking about like maybe there's a way for us to run something in December where, you know, you play a few games and you get some stuff, but yeah. a very light touch, mm -hmm. you know, event. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely not, you know, the time that we spend on that stuff is going to slow us down from doing the other stuff that we really need to do mm -hmm. in the short term. So uh, if we can get something in there that's a fun little event to play with relatively quickly, sh sure, we'll do that. But if it's going to be any major arc of work, it's not worth doing right now because we got so much else that's important. Cool. All right. Well, that was our last question for the day. Uh, thanks so much, oh, everyone. I'm, oh, wait. I'm going to answer one more question. Cool. Go I think for there's, it. there's one uh, doomer take in here that I want to address. Sure. It just got yeah. posted. And I think it's a very reasonable question mm -hmm. um, that we should address. And it is thoughts on Smite 1 having more players than Smite 2 still over four times the amount. Smite 2 is still a uh, alpha game that you have to pay to get into or get a key. Um, the vast majority of the player base is not going to play it until it's free. Yeah. That is our expectation. Once Smite 2 goes free to play, if it still has fewer players than Smite 1, then that's something that we will be very concerned about. We are not, this, this is about the player split that we expected at this time. Um, because we know a lot of people don't want to play an alpha game. Yeah. We know, especially on console. Um, we know a lot of, cause, cause we've been very public. It's an alpha. It says alpha everywhere. Right. Um, and the word of mouth around the game is that it's an alpha because it is an alpha. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's not even if you've been watching a stream where you're like, oh man, I gotta go try this thing. The feedback you get from them is, Hey, maybe give it a month or two. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you, you gotta pay 30 bucks. Right. Um, only a small fraction of Smite 1 players have ever spent a dollar. You know, I think it's like, I don't want to give you the percentage, but like, I, I'm sure as like the kind of people that are watching the show, you're like, I'm sure every player has given them a lot of money mm -hmm. over the years. No, it's, it, that's not the way free to play games work. You know, it's, uh, you know, a, a small percentage of players yeah. that ever spent a dollar in the game. So there's a lot of free to play players and there's a lot of players that have spent money in Smite 1 that just haven't moved over yet. So um, again, we're not concerned about that right now. That's kind of where we expected the game to be. Um, obviously, everybody's happier if we have both more players in both games. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's never a bad problem to have. But uh, I think that like where we are, and I love the fake numbers that get posted on the internet all the time. Uh, if if Hira has made as much money as uh, a, a person just shared in chat, um, I would be ecstatic. <laughs> that is a, a ridiculous number that uh, is pulled out of thin air and has no basis in reality. Um, so. Uh, anyway, don't trust everything you see on the internet. They'll tell you that you know uh, celebrities worth hundreds of millions of dollars right, when yeah. uh, they are not. <laughs> uh, very similar things for uh, for Pyro Studios. So um, we are a we are a very proud small indie studio or mid sized indie studio. Yep. Um, we love this game. We're working hard to make it better every day. Yeah. So and we're we're super ecstatic to continue to build the game along the players who have decided yes. to join us for yes. Apple, which is. Kind of the whole point where why we're running this early thing is to build a game alongside the community. So. Yep. Awesome. Well, hey, we appreciate you all being here today. We're going to be here Monday, Wednesday, yep. Friday next week. We're going to answer more questions. Um, so uh, and we're, we're going to talk more about what we're hot fixing next yep. and what we're patching next and what's next on the schedule. Remember to vote for which version of Mulan. Oh, yeah. You want. Check out the forum out on the forum. social media. Uh, got dropped in chat. I'm sure somebody can share it as well. And then be on the lookout for later on today for hopefully an upcoming patch with some bug fixes and balance. Yep. Yep. Cool. I'm looking forward to the balance. All right. Sweet. Well, thanks so much for joining us, chat. We'll see you right back here on Monday at 1 p.m. for the next edition of Titan Talks. But until then, we'll see you on the battleground. Thanks.